Hi FlossTube, it's Lynn, the Canadian Stitcher, uh, back for a weekly update. Hello and welcome to all my returning subscribers, new subscribers, and anybody who's here for the first time. I'm hoping the taping of this, or filming of this video, goes better than last week. Uh, that was, the one that I ended up posting was Take 5, and I had actually fully recorded it twice and made huge mistakes at the end and had to re-record it and then there was two other failed attempts in there. So by the time I got to actually film it, I couldn't remember what I had already said or <laughs> um, what I had talked about. Did I say that already? I wasn't really sure. So it was just sort of, um, I hope this one works. And then when I went to take the little video of the skeleton tree, I had no idea how to orient my camera and it ended up sideways and then upside down and then sideways and then it appeared to be sideways again but it did actually load straight up but so that was a lot of running up and down the stairs and back down to the computer to get things loaded but hopefully this one will go better so i want to talk about my weekly progress and do a whip parade and we'll do questions and comments and i have a giveaway so I'll be giving away Red Sugar by Nora Corbett and last week I had asked you to tell me what you would want your superpower to be if you could have any superpower. Mine is to tr time travel in a space bubble so I can't be injured or affect anything or have anything affect me. So I'll, re I'll read these off. There's some, some really good ones. Um, I have them all written on a piece of paper just to make it more organized and then as I'm doing my comments and questions I'll just quickly cut these apart and put them in my little, my little bowl here. So Nicole S in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada said that teleportation so she could travel anywhere and teleport to an LNS because <laughs> I guess she doesn't have any in her area. Kay Lowry, uh, hers would be to heal deadly diseases. Elise Deshaines, and I'm I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm really bad at pronouncing people's names. So if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. I do the best that I can. Uh, Elise uh, would like to be able to change into animals. Karen Monich would like to split herself so she could be in two different places at the same time. Yes. At work, making the money, and at home, doing the cross stitch. That'd be cool. Stitching Diva 328 to go forward in time and then return to the present. Ocam to travel the universe, see the wonders, and hang out with the local aliens. Lady Shard 7796, she's from Arizona. She's Her superpower would be to be fluent in every language, travel anywhere, and be able to talk to locals, learn, and help if there are any problems. Donna Bland, make the street safe with no weapons. Faith Fuller, the ability to stop and start time so she would have time to do everything she wants to do. Julie Vickers, would, hers would be to visit loved ones in heaven. Karen Kent, to be in two different places at once so she could be working at home. Yes, exactly. Uh, Verpi R, the ability to heal people. And Nina Hobby Site, to heal animals and people. And Chrysinda Nickel to time travel, and Angela Bullbeck to finish things quickly and accurately. Superpower would be efficiency. Efficiency girl. So I did get some questions. Cindy Godet asked what size the skeleton tree is going to be when it's done. And I wasn't sure. So I measured it this morning. The stitching size is going to be 20 by 28. That's the inside uh, edge of the matting. And the frame size is going to be 32 by 40. And it's a good heavy frame. So I've already spoken to the framers about it. And they did say that they will be able to put some type of special hanging, I'm not sure what they are, something different on the back of them to um, be able to hang up a really heavy piece. They're 
quite accustomed to doing that with um, framing heavier pieces like the hockey jerseys and stuff that people bring in signed to, to have framed. So yeah, it's a good size. I have two spots picked out in my house. I thought I knew where I wanted to put it, but I might actually put it in the living room if I can get it to, if there's a good stud in the wall on the part where I want to hang it, that it would be centered. I think it might go in the living room. Jolie Vickers asked if I hang all my projects or if I give them away. So back when I first started cross-stitching, I made some little things for myself. Um, a really silly little teddy bear picture was the first picture I made. I was in my 20s. Um, and uh, then I I made a lot of hand towels. I really liked cross-stitching hand towels and I would make tons of them and give them away just as housewarming gifts or birthday gifts, that kind of thing. And I did stitch um, different pictures for different members of my family too for, for different occasions. So I was actually stitching a lot but giving a lot away. And um, there was some that I had stitched for myself that when, you know, through different moves and stuff, it was a different style. I mean, I, I lived in a little cabin and the, the, the pictures that I had stitched weren't appropriate to when we moved to our brand new house, let's say. So some of them I didn't even end up keeping. I should have. I, I regret that now. But um, And then uh, I showed in my FFOs, the baby edition, how much baby afghans and quilts and bibs and bottle warmers and... All this, oh, and the frame pictures to the the burr samplers that I had stitched for my kids. That's all in my um, FFOs, the baby edition, and all of that. I of course I kept all of that for for my own babies. But at the same time, we we were a young group of nurses that had, you know we were all sort of in the same same kind of stage of of our life that we're all friends, and everybody seemed to be getting married and having babies all at the same time. So I made lots and lots and lots of baby baby gifts for other people too. I don't think I ever stitched some on a quilt or afghan, but I definitely made a lot of bibs and, and gave those out as, as a welcome, welcome gifts for the babies. And then um, I haven't stitched anything really for my kids since. I have um, one right now that I'm working on, one is going to be for one of my sons and the other one is completely not interested in anything cross stitch. He asks me to be polite. Are you still working on your cross stitch? And I go, yeah, I'm working on this one now and I'll show him and he'll go, cool. That's about all. I did have a, a picture in mind for him, a really personalized one of um, Canadian geese and then a picture of him standing with a Canadian goose that, that he had got um, when they were hunting when he was hunting with my dad and, and he said, nah, I'm not interested in that. I thought it would be nice to do the Canadian geese picture and then his picture down below. And I asked him about it and he just, he just, honestly, I'm glad he told me because I, that's a lot of work to put into that. And then framing, like custom framing, two different mats. So I'm glad he said, honestly, I, I just wouldn't hang that on my wall. It's cross stitch. It's not a guy thing. That's, that's his opinion. I don't agree with him, but <laughs> it's his opinion. So, and then those silly mystery packages that I got in the mail, still getting lots of comments about those ridiculous. I'm sorry, it's just so funny. Those bizarre ribbon bras that I've been getting in the mail randomly. Tina from Simply and Stitches said that I should uh, attach gems to them and wear them. So Tina, tell me exactly where I'm supposed to wear this. <laughs> I'll keep them, and if me and Tina ever end up at a retreat together, we're gonna have to wear them. All blinged up, over top of our clothes, of course, and be running around, something like that. Now, Tina, the challenge is on. We have to see how we can get to go to a retreat together. Um, so, I need to learn how to do editing. So I'm wondering if anybody can recommend for me a some software 
or a program that I can learn how, it has to be easy because I'm not techno and I don't have anybody show me how to do this, but how to learn how to quickly edit my videos if, if there's a mistake in it and I just want to cut out that little bit or if I had to pause or something like that. Um, it needs to be really fast and easy. The, the, t the time it takes, and I'm not complaining, I'm, I like doing this, but the, the planning, the setting up, the recording, the up downloading and then uploading, posting the video, it takes about roughly two to three hours, I think. And I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, I usually do them on Sunday mornings because that's Saturdays are kind of my day. Um, it's usually house cleaning and cross stitching as much as I can and, and then Sundays I do my video and then it's um, meal prep for the week and more housework, laundry, that kind of thing. So I don't have a whole lot of time for editing. I wish I had somebody that could do that for me. Uh, so if you can recommend a program or software, please leave a comment below. Okay, let's talk about the cross stitch. Um, I did work on cranberries. I took this one to work. This is cross stitch and cross country stitching magazine. If memory serves, it's October of 2003. So I'm almost I did take this to work and but and I left it on my table right by my purse when I was ready to leave and I forgot to bring it but I finished this section in here and the A and I realized I had a mistake in here I was off counting by one so I ripped out this bottom row and restitched that and I think that's all I got done so I'm almost done this portion here so that's about a little over well, probably about a third of this one so I'm going to keep working on that one at work. It's just really easy because it's just little bits at a time and whole, not a whole lot of, of, of counting. So that's a good one to have uh, just on my lunch breaks. The Angel of Summer is in my whip pile. So I will show her when I get there, but I didn't work on her this week. I said that she is resting for a little while. And I might pick her up this afternoon. I actually looked at it and I thought, mm, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how she treats me. <laughs> if she's mean to me, I'm not going to work on her. And Canadian Beauty by Joan Elliott. So this one I'm doing conversion on, like I said last week. I'm going to, essentially I'm converting her dress to, the lower part of her dress to white. So I'll show you how much I got done on her. There was one, one day that I didn't stitch at all in the evening. Um, just stuff going on so I did finish the little beaver not the back stitching but the little beaver and I did the nest with the loon in it so the next part that I'm going to work on I'm trying to I want to fill in kind of the animals and some of the um, foliage at the bottom so that it's easier to get my jumping off points for the dress so there is some foliage in here and flowers. This red of the dress will be converted. There's some more foliage down here. This part that's green I thought was the grass, but this is actually one of the folds of her dress, so that's gonna be converted. And I'm gonna stitch probably this foliage and then the bear and the fox and the foliage over here, and then I'll start on the dress. Or I might actually come up and do the owl and the wolf too, and then do the dress because that'll give, have a really good spot. It'll be clear where I need to fill in and, and do the color conversions over to the white, ecru, and beige. So I'm really enjoying this one. This is a pleasant little stitch. It's going a little bit slower because I am using my um, needle trolley on my finger. I don't have one here, but it's the, the needle trolley with the little darning needle on the end of it to, as, to use as a stitch laying tool. And because I was working with the lighter beiges and some white and the browns, I was laying each stitch as I, as I went, which it, it's not horribly time consuming. It doesn't triple it by any means, but it does take, you know, an extra fraction of a second to have to lay it across the, the top of the tool and make sure the two strands are laying parallel. So that one's going to be put away and then put into rotation for a little while. So... This week coming up, I'm going to be working on the Angel of Summer. I will. 
at least a little bit every day. Continue the cranberries at work and I'm going to be going back to death by cross stitch because I had only worked on that the one week that I made the start. So we'll do the whip parade. I need a little spot to put these things on. Excuse me, hold please. Oh, I guess I do have another whip. That would be the skeleton tree that's still laying there. So that's, I'm not gonna tell you the number yet. Um, I haven't made out the pattern yet of how I'm gonna lay the keys and the pearls and that. So I still have that box sitting on top there to keep the cats from getting at it. But okay, let's do whip parade. I love a good whip parade. It's so interesting to see what everybody's working on. So I'm going from smallest to largest. So I showed this one last week, Donna Dewberry's Rosebud Wreath. This is a Bucilla kit, little, I call this a small, but I guess it's small to medium, I don't know. So I got that much done so far. For Mania, I had big dreams, hopes, Imagined. <laughs> so this is the Dream, Hope, Believe, Imagine by Joan Elliott. Dream, Hope, Believe, Imagine. So I had uh, made a little start on three of them, a little bit each day. So I'll show you. This is Dream. Leave, and I never did start. Imagine. Tom's Kincaid. This is a Candomar Designs. Home is where the heart is one. This is a stamped one. And where was I on this? I started over on this side, filling in some of the stitches of the tree. Oh, and I did the shutters there. This was a mania start also, so. I believe this is the one that has lots and lots and lots of French knots, so I'm actually looking forward to that because I'm going to get very, very good at doing French knots. And the next one, also Candemar Designs, Thomas Kincaid, Home is Where the Heart Is, too. Lucy came in here and he's going to be interrupting. So I'm going to kick him out. You're going to go. Sorry for that. He was in here when I was setting up and he meowed continuously. So I know other people think it's it's kind of funny or their cats are abused because they their cats hear him and they wonder where the cat is, but I find him too distracting. So <laughs> and then if he jumps up here, I, it's just there's just too much stuff on the table and he'll end up making a mess. So so home is where the heart is too. Same thing, it's a stamped one, but a little bit different. This one's not as bright, it's a bit more muted tones. And there was another smaller one that I had done like this so that I thought I would fill in um, much more color and make it even nicer. And it actually didn't turn out as well as the ones that I, I've done to a full size one of these and a smaller one and to leave less stitching in and just kind of let the picture be more open and, and breathe actually looks better so not overfilling them and so this one yeah I did all along the roof here and then the shutters across the top the next one is a dimensions kit Northwind Owl 
can't remember when I started on this one. I know it was during the winter time, but I have that much done. The next one is, you haven't seen this for a while because this one was at work and then it came home and didn't get worked on at all. This is the Long Dog Samplers Foursome Reel. And I've completed, I numbered them one, two, three, and four. I completed number two in black on white. I did this one blue on white, and I'm doing this one that I call number four with burgundy. DMC 814, I believe it is. I got park threads here, so I'm just gonna do that. So I quite like this one. This one was with me at work. I was working on lunch breaks and um, I don't even think I'm halfway. No, I'm not halfway up yet. Pretty close, but yeah. So I am changing this um, centerpiece. I, I, did, I did look it up. There's uh, letters in there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. There's letters in there that has significant meaning to the Long Dog Company. I'm not sure if it was their 10 year anniversary or what it was, but I'm actually going to stitch one of these birds from one of these birds, either from here or from here, inside that little pattern there too. The next one is another Dimensions kit. This is the one I'm making for one of my sons. He picked it out. Chickadees and lilacs. And this one, I think I only worked on this for one or two days, but I got this much done because there was a lot of half stitches in this one. The Dimensions kits had lots of half stitches, different um, strand, numbers of strands of floss across. Yeah. The next one is from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. January, February 1993. And this was a birth sampler or birth announcement announcing the arrival of Melissa. And I just like it. I know it's cutesy. I like it. I always intended to stitch it for one of my kids and never did. So I'm doing this as a spring picture and at the banner at the top, I'm going to write announcing the arrival of, and then in here it's going to say spring instead of her name. So that will be a, a spring picture. So I had worked on the bottom corner of, of this one and kind of filled in the, the picnic area there. So this one's working out nice. Another Thomas Kincaid. Uh, lamp, Lamplet Brook. This one also is a stamped one, of course. And I started in the bottom corner and filled in all of this part here. These ones actually go fast once once you're working on them because it is a lot of half stitches also and then um, you're not filling in everything you're just filling in little bits of details here and there so it's just a matter of getting at it. The Gold Collection Dimensions Fall Fairy. This is one of my favorites. So when I started on her I made great progress initially <laughs> ah, and then she hasn't been worked on for a while so I haven't haven't really been thinking about this one very much so and then her companion the woodland enchantress another one by dimensions gold collection and this one not quite as much progress on but still Fair amount done there in the bottom corner. Uh, 
Angel of Summer. I have to tear out, I have to rip up probably about 10 rows here. There's a mistake, counting mistake in there. And then to start filling in the garland. So me and, uh, sorry, Tina from Simply and Stitches and I are racing to finish this one. I completed the upper garland and the garland all through here to alternating dress, garland, dress, garland. And she left the garland till the end and her video this week, she, she showed that she's really struggling with, with hers working on the garland and having to deal with one little stitch of one color and then it's lots of counting over and up before that next color comes up again. So it is a challenging piece for that reason, for sure. Just there's, it's not a beginner piece by any means. So this is the Celtic Spring. There's her picture. Celtic Spring, very close to being finished this one. So that is the bottom of the dress. I haven't filled in the gold stitches yet or the beads. And I'm leaving all that till the end. There's her pretty face. And I started stitching the letters at the top. So let's look at that. So the side banners are done except for the gold and the beads. So I just need to stitch the letters across the top and then this these rolls up here and then I can start doing the beads and the, and the gold so she's fairly close to a finish. I should bring her out and work on her for a solid week. Siren and the Shipwreck also we haven't seen for a while. I couldn't find my picture, the, pat, the pattern's right down there but I don't know where her original picture is somewhere. Um, this is my photocopy, Siren and the Shipwreck. This is a Mirabilia design, the first Mirabilia that I've done. And oh, I, I like working on her so much when it comes time to put her away, I want to keep her out. So that's how much I have done, just her bottom tail fin and coming up on her fin. So this might be another one that I haven't worked on for uh, for a while, so once I once July is done and I'm finished with my goal of focus on on finishes, I should probably bring out these bigger, beautiful ones and get working on those. So then there's the keys and the crystals and pearls and elephants to go on stitched onto the tree, and then I had that new start for the first day of summer. For June, oops, which is the Stony Creek Samplers to Treasure, and I'm doing the Pansy Sampler here. So I started on the alphabet, and that's how much I got done. So that is, I call these small, medium, and large. I guess this skeleton would be extra large, but so there's 21 of those. That's too much. It's too much for me. Um, so now I'm gonna we'll do the full coverage and other extra large. So this one I showed last week, the links. And I looked at how many pages each ones of these are, and that's going to help me set my priorities of which ones I want to work on sooner than, than later, and with the goal of getting some of these done. So here's the, the Lynx, Lynx Cat. The Lynx Cat total is 24 pages, but the side pages on the, on the right side are only partial, as is the top row. So it works out to be probably six pages, like I would consider six full pages less than that. So 18 pages. So that's not actually that bad. It's just lots of color switching with that one because it's the fur. 
but I like that one. The next one that is large, not full coverage, but is um, the Long Dog Sampler Death by Cross Stitch. Sorry, I've got glare. This one I'm using color 820 by DMC. And I started in the bottom corner, and this was a week's worth. And this one is going to be my focus project for this week coming up. The next one is the Panthero Leo Lion by Hade. Artwork by Stephen Paul Carlson. And I don't I don't know how many pages I've completed of each. When I start stitching on them for the week, I usually show you where I'm starting off, what page I'm starting off on. So that's just the bottom of the lion and just starting to show some of the fur in there. Next one's my favorite. My favorite whip and my favorite aid. Discovery. I'm going to let you read her name because I'm terrible at pronouncing her name. I don't want to feel bad. Discovery is 49 pages. And I'm working across. So I've completed. Four pages across, I think, already. And this is one that I'm wanting to, to get lots of work done on this year. Maybe, possibly finishing it next year. I doubt if I'll finish it this year. Be nice. The next one, Flight of the Lynx. Artwork by Josephine Wall. This is a hay design. This one has 40 pages, but lots and lots of detailed and color switching. So that's something that may take longer than, even though it's 40 pages, it might take more time than say discovery because there's not any big solid blocks of color. So that's how far I've gotten on her just working on the trees in the bottom corner. Blue Dragon by Elena Lazar Lazareva. Have a very little start on her. Just down in the I always start bottom left corner and work across. So, Blue Dragon is 64 pages, but this one has significant blocks of color in it. Yep, so. The next one, Treasure Hunt Bookshelf by Amy Stewart. 66 pages and that's where I'm at. So I'm working bottom. This was the end of the page but I decided to go up and work the entire panel. Does this one have four seasons to it? Like, No, this one doesn't. Stitch and Time is more like has four seasons, but this has four shells one, two, three, four shells. So I'm working the entire way across the first shell, and then I'll go up. And the last one is a Stitch and Time artwork by Amy Stewart. This one has the seasons so spring, summer, fall, winter. And this way. 
So uh, this one, I decided I was going to stitch the entire winter panel across and then move up to the fall panel. So it's actually working on two pages up and kind of two pages across at the same time. So I have a bigger magnetic board for those because there's actually four pieces of paper stuck on the board to work because I feather into the next page and because I'm completing the entire panel going up. So that is all of my whips. So that's 29. <laughs> that's a lot. So still for July, I'm going to be working on Death by Cross Stitch is going to be the focus. A little bit on the angel. And then um, next week, sorry, I always get a cat here on my lip. Um, starting off the whips from smallest to largest, those are the ones that I'm going to focus on finishing, kind of the smallest. Let's see if I can get a couple of those done in July. And uh, then I'll probably go back into the rotation of a smaller one, an extra large, a medium, an extra large, a large, an extra large. I just have too many, so I'm just not getting to them as, as quickly as I would doing them around a rotation like that. So if I clear some out, I'll be able to bring other ones up sooner. So that's my plans. And I think that is everything except for the draw. Yep, that's it. So I've got all the names. I was cutting them apart while we were chatting there. So I'm going to mix them all up and do a random selection for the winner of the Nora Corbett Red Sugar. One. The winner is Lady Shard 7796 from Arizona and her superpower was to be fluent in every language, travel anywhere, talk to locals, learn and help if there are any problems. So Lady Shard, um, get in touch with me, just send me a message. I'm also gonna leave a comment in your comment and um, for you to message me so that I can get your address and I can mail this out to you. Some time ago I did the draw for the Egyptian sampler. I'm sorry to the winner of that, I haven't mailed it yet. I'm, I have a couple little things that I'm needing to mail, uh, but I'm putting a, a few extras in it, so I'm needing some time to, to pull, pull some things together, and life itself is has been so busy for me, and there's some things going on, so I just haven't had the time to be able to do that. I'm sure I could just drop it in the mail to you, and you'd be just as happy, but I want to include a couple extra little goodies for you. So. Um, just be patient. Um, these will get mailed out. I just um, need some time to just gather a, f a few things up. So some extra little gifts. So I hope everybody has a good stitchy week. I'm looking outside to see if there's any sunshine because I was hoping to get out in the garden. But the rain has stopped for a few minutes. Anyway, it's been raining for almost two weeks straight. Not all day, but every day it has been raining. So I hope everybody has a good week and happy stitching. Bye.